Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To some of you, peace out to the rest of you. You know who it is. It's the blackest man on YouTube. So black, you clicked on this video to watch it and your screen went dark. You know what I'm going to ask you to do and why I'm going to ask you to do it. So let me go ahead and start the message. We all saw the t-shirt. And it says, black women deserve a love that doesn't require suffering first. The question is, do they? And the answer is that there's no genetic reason that they don't deserve it. I mean, being a black woman doesn't make them deserve more uh, suffering than any other women, obviously. Uh, it could make them deserve less if you simply look at what black folks have gone through. However, what about in the culture, though? Is there anything in black women's culture that demands more suffering in their love lives? See, a woman in my family who was good wound up with a bad man through no fault of her own. We all know this happens. But also, I couldn't have gotten her to step aside and look for another man either. That would have been impossible if I had known he was abusive somehow. In the end, there are many men who don't require suffering of women because this is out of the character and upbringing. And they're not all ugly to women either. It's not in their nature or nurture to do this. And these men are boring to women even without being visually ugly. They're boring to women, especially to visually attractive women in the West. Black women in the West are still Western women, and they are even more bored than Becky by men who don't have the thought of anything that requires suffering from them. They don't have the thought of using her credit cards or her cash or her assets at all or driving her car around, and they don't even want any more than they can afford without her help to begin with. They will forego new furniture or new anything if they can't hand over their own cash for it, and they will not ask their girlfriends or wives for any help. There are men like this, and they're not always ugly. Their whole lives have been geared from childhood for them to not need others to make it. And if they somehow wind up not making it by themselves anyway, they stay by themselves so as to not be a drain on a woman. And yet somehow they are boring to Western women. And all I will say is that until Western women train themselves to no longer be bored by what's good for them in the long run, they will be vulnerable to the men who require suffering from them because, frankly, they will run to these men to begin with. You see, when brothers run to Southeast Asia or to Brazil or the Dominican Republic, they will not be automatically categorized as boring anymore. And the U.S. dollar has something to do with it, but it has less to do with it than what we think it does. Frankly, black men aren't seen as being the wealthier Americans anyway. Everyone knows the white, well, white boy has the money. But the women there, especially in Southeast Asia, aren't trained to associate good traits of responsibility with boredom and kindness with weakness. Consideration isn't taken for some sort of cowardice. That is a Western phenomenon. And for West, black Western women, due to trauma that those crackers caused, it's exaggerated. It's worse in Sapphire than it is in Becky. And we're at a time when brothers shines. I mean, I, I use the term shine as a compliment. When shines who aren't the drama causing type don't care why they're categorized as boring and ugly to start with. There are sisters who are accomplished and would like an accomplished man, but they're not being approached by them. So we no longer care why they aren't approaching us because we know that there is some unaccomplished drama causing women's resource using Negro out there that this accomplished sister did approach and will approach again. So why they're not approaching us, we don't, you can't make an excuse to justify it. She's approaching this dude who has less. And it, it, I mean, if we're just fat and ugly and that's what we all look that way, then there might be some logical reason. But that's not the case. The reason for that matters to us no more. Self-improvement talk won't convince us that we did something wrong if the main trait shared in common by men who get treated like this is nothing more than our sense of responsibility and our distance from white folks' negative stereotypes of us. And the main trait shared by the men who get approached by attractive and in-shape women is their stereotypicality and their sense of irresponsibility. So yes, accomplished women shouldn't have to settle for guys with nothing of their own, especially if it's not due to a stroke of bad luck, but rather to his own stereotypicality in the first damn place with one exception. One exception can make an accomplished woman have to settle for a guy with nothing of his own and that is if that's what she's going for. If that's all she's, if she's willing to do more for that man then that's what she has to settle for. However, and that's not even settling. If she's willing to do more for that man then that's her choice. She's not settling. However, at no point did black men ever say or insinuate that academically, intellectually accomplished black women have to be limited to men with less, especially not just because of their, their minds themselves. Now, maybe the looks can do it, maybe not. 
But just like with the man, it depends on the woman. And this works both ways for both genders. But even this works more so against men because only somewhere between 20 to 13 percent of men are attractive in the West anyway. Simply put, we never limited women's reproductive or romantic lives the way they limited ours without even needing a conference to agree to do so. Women were able to sit up and with no conference, no conversation, they just naturally agreed or supernaturally agreed that they're going to limit men's uh, romantic and marital options. Do black men who don't fit negative stereotypes of us get limited in their options? Oh, yes. Even tall guys who were sharp upstairs and, and uninvolved in violence get this limit placed on them. All it takes is for a woman to be attracted visually and know this, and she will steer clear of men who she might otherwise like because of her shame at being seen with a guy who isn't scary enough to white folks and to some other Negroes, too. They could be the same kind of people, he and her. Really, they could have the same interest, but for the black man to have the same brainy interest is seen as feminine and weak by she and by her and her friends, and this is enough to ruin it for him in her eyes. What are my friends going to say? I might be class valedictorian, but I can't show this nigga off if he is. See, black women do genetically deserve a love that requires no more suffering than required from other women. But what we must understand is that other women around the world do have to go through something they hate, not because they're less deserving, but because no one is more deserving of a love requiring no suffering. And frankly, these sisters are sitting up here comparing themselves to white women whose men have fed, clothed, and housed them from kidnapping, slavery, and colonization. They're not comparing themselves to other women of color who were also victims of white supremacy and whose men were also victims of this, but yet have no more than we do overall and also whose women aren't rebelling against the men in mass and telling the men, I'll never listen to you until you become the new white man or die trying. Sisters ain't comparing themselves to these other women of color despite these similarities. This is why they're not leaving these super select F boys for other black men or even for other men of color either. No, but specifically and only for white men whose wealth and lifestyles are directly dependent on their ancestors' exploitations of us and others. What sisters are really saying is that because they have been through what they've been through, they deserve to get more for less. And I would have agreed with this statement too, because we were traumatized and still are by these goddamn devils and their passive aggressively racist grandkids. But to the extent that they went through crap because they wanted no good niggas to begin with, because they had an extra eight hours every day to work on their stroke, as Chris Rock described these guys, they deserve no better than other women. See, when you look at non-Western and non-Westernized women in general, they don't have the same sense of exaggerated hybristophilia when they're judging their men that Sapphire and Becky have when they're judging Western men. They're not as busy asking themselves how many asses and whose asses this man can kick to justify being interested in him. And this makes them actually deserve less suffering in their love lives than women who do ask these dumb questions. The non-Western women ain't asking themselves about this, so why shouldn't they suffer less than the white or the black Western woman, regardless of blackness or the lack thereof? It, let's call it what it is. O'Shea Duke Jackson pointed this out, and I think the video might be entitled She's Attracted to Unavailable Men, but I'm probably wrong about which video. I am not wrong about him saying that sisters will pass up men they like and want because they can't show him off. And this is the cause, the root cause of most of the suffering of these sisters. So I'm going to say what is politically incorrect, considered to be a loser thing to say. But I can say it with no re negative repercussions, re repercussions, so I'm going to say it on behalf of brothers who would be blamed for something they didn't do if they said it. I'm going to say it. If they cannot change what they want, the same way that we men have to change what we want at a young age if we don't want our lives ruined by strippers, then they will continue to suffer in their love lives and marriages if they find any, period. Most brothers ain't saying the sisters have to actually train themselves to want what they don't want to be happy in the long run. I Blackheart am saying that with no shame. I am saying the sisters have to learn to at least choose what they want themselves individually and not what the peer group wants. And that may be necessary but still insufficient by itself. They may have to train themselves to want what the hell they don't want or they will suffer. And if anything, they haven't suffered enough. This is not about hatred and this is not about me and my dingling at this point. I'm old, I'm married to a non ados and I've got trust issues that wouldn't allow me to sling my penis everywhere, even if women ask me to do it. So this can't be about me. But it is about other brothers who aren't wimps, they aren't cowards, they're not even visually ugly to you, and they're not broke. They just simply don't fit negative stereotypes. And I pronounce it that way intentionally, negative. 
And therefore, they got sexually and maritally cheated by having no better options than either having to do, be, and pay more to get less from Sapphire, or Becky, for that matter, or leave the U.S. and the West in general to find feminine women who would have at least left them alone if they weren't interested, instead of doing what Sapphire and Becky, especially Sapphire, would do, which is try to fleece them to financially support the sperm-preferred super-selected bed bucks to whom they insisted on giving the best for free. This ain't our fault, and this ain't about me. You change or you suffer. I hope this has been a benefit. Assalamu alaikum.